Hello Dakar wannabes, my name is Greg Villalobos and I'm going to show you some of the very simple roadbook gear that I used on my recent Kiel the 500. Okay, so if you are a pro and you've done lots of um, professional or semi-professional rallies before, then this video is not for you, <laughs> okay? Uh, if you are just starting out and you've thought about doing a roadbook rally before, um, or you don't even know what a roadbook rally is, stick with me and I will kind of show you through some of the gear that I used on my recent Kiel the 500, which is part of the Rally Moto um, adventure series. These are rally events that are designed to help you have a taste of what it's like to do the Dakar, but without remortgaging your house, spending 35,000 pounds on a bike and coming back divorced. <laughs> so it's a, a, a very light commitment of one weekend. They run in the north of England. The recent one I did was in Kielder Forest up in Northumberland and there's the Wales 500. There's also been an Isle of Man 500 and I know that um, Bert, the rally organiser at Rally Moto, is looking at events all over the place. So these events use the same principle as the Dakar and other big um, rallies, as in you are uh, navigating with roadbook instructions, which is supplied on a big scroll of paper. Um, but it's not about speed, that's where it differs. This is about accuracy. So you've got a GPS transmitter, so the guys know where you are at all times. And it's about trying to, if, if the course is 503.2 kilometers, it's the winner is the person that gets as close to that uh, 502.3 kilometers, if that's what I just said, um, and is as accurate as possible, which means they didn't make any mistakes, really. Um, it's not about speed. So I think one of the, the great things about this event is that it, it's, it's just it's pure amateur. Um, you can turn up with whatever you've got. So um, you can use or wear whatever you've got. So here's a, a guy wearing uh, the Adventure Spec Mongolia jacket and pant, which is essentially the gear that we developed for Lynn Poskett to take part in the Dakar. So this guy's very well prepared for this event. Um, next to, here's another guy, I got chatting to him later in the day, he's wearing a pair of like, essential like fishing waders uh, for his waterproofing, which great, you know, doesn't matter, uh, keeps him dry, gets him through it, that's absolutely fine. And the same goes for the bikes really, um, there was everything from vintage um, Honda XL, XR, 600, 650s, whatever they are, I'm sorry, Noel, I don't know, I can never remember, um, through to modern KTM, 890s, 790s, a lot of 690s, 701s, um, the, the event's not really designed for lightweight enduro bikes, all of the track, all of the courses on wide gravel um, tracks, and it's not really designed for enduro bikes, but they are designed for big adventure bikes. Um, you are don't have to have special tyres. I um, rode the Motors Rousey's on my AJP PR7, which uh, give a, a great amount of grip for this kind of event. But you can ride up like a couple of other guys that I met there from London on their GSs with fairly aggressive road tyres and, you know, ride the rally. It's very loud. Seeing all the bikes out. We've not been allowed to ride in groups for so long. Great to be out on the bike again. I was on my AJP PR7 um, riding with Chris Colling from Adventspec, who was on the uh, Honda CRF 450L. We were taking part in the rally and also using it as a way of um, testing some new gear that we've got coming. So Chris um, was riding in the uh, trailhead jersey, the zip-up jersey, um, the new linesman pant, which we're getting close to finishing the prototypes on. Um, what else did he have? We had the new Magadan panniers on the CRF, so they're pretty close to coming out. Um, a secret jacket that I'm not allowed to talk about yet, and um, a new set of gloves, the windproof gloves that are probably going to be coming out later this year, starting next year. So yeah, it was a great example, a great, a great way for us to put a lot of that gear through its paces. Um, 
because it's designed for this kind of event and riding, essentially, riding through Kielder is as close as you're going to get to riding in Scandinavia, really, um, here in the UK. So the main thing that, that this film's about is, is the gear um, and the navigation gear. Um, so if you're familiar with, uh, with Dakar Rally, uh, you'll probably have seen the big nav towers that those bikes have. Um, and there was some of that here. So here is um, a guy uh, in, oh, we all had to wear bright fluorescent yellow vests, I might add. Um, it was all part of um, making sure that we we're identifiable as part of the event. Anyway, um, he's on something like, I think it's a 701 with a really sweet kind of carbon fiber, fancy um, rally tower at the front. And this guy is really well set up. So he, he takes his, uh, his rallies um, seriously. So um, uh, he also had a shoot and ride sticker, which is what caught my eye. So well done. Um, so up front, he has got in front of him a road book holder. Um, and that is uh, connected to buttons on his handlebars so he can push one button to make the roadbook go forwards and another button to make it go backwards. Now the pro rally riders do that because they're riding really fast and they don't want to have to take their hands off the handlebars. Um, he also has got above the roadbook he's got two ICO meters which are um, uh, like trip meters. I think that the, they are attached or connected to your wheels um, and that is the way that you <clears throat> measure distance in, in the rally. Um, he's also, to the left of his uh, roadbook holder, got a phone running a trip meter, and that will be measuring his distance through GPS uh, on his phone. Um, on the right-hand side, he's got a actual a Montana unit, which is a GPS unit, not necessary for this event. Um, and then, on his handlebars, he's got a little blue box strap there, and that is the GPS transmitter, which everyone that takes part in the event is given by uh, Rally Moto with some wiring to wire it into your battery, um, and that helps or, or, or makes it makes it possible for the event organisers to track you throughout the whole course. So there's a safety element there, really, um, but also that tracking gives them the result of how accurate you were at the end of the 502.3 kilometres. And then there's the pure amateur who may never have done this before. So this is a BMW GS1200 something or other, um, and it's running the standard Rallymoto lunchbox Tupperware holder, which is a, quite an ingenious invention for, from Bert. Um, it's a very simple plastic box that's got um, two uh, bars through, which you can put, mount your paper on, and you can manually use it to scroll the paper back and forth. This little plate here is to strap your phone onto, um, and this here mounts it onto your handlebars, and that's all you need. And that's supplied as part of um, the entry to the event. So you, when you sign on, you get given this, and when you're finished, you give it back, and you don't need any other gear other than your phone running a trip meter, something like I use um, Rally Blitz, which you've got to buy, but it's really good, it's really accurate. Um, and those two things are all you need. So this guy's on his T700 and he's kind of got one step up from that. So he's opted to actually bring his own. So this is actually uh, mine. So this is a, a, a dedicated unit. It's still manual. It's not um, an automatic unit. Um, it's uh, an F2R free to ride um, unit. I don't think they're hugely expensive, um, but he's got it mounted up there on, on his dash. It's in a really good place because you can see it really easily. And then he's got his phone mounted above that. Um, and his phone's running the trip meter. Um, so yeah, it's a, a good little setup, that. Right? Everything's in kind of line of sight. Okay, and this is my bike here in the studio after the, uh, the event. So I'm gonna talk you through my setup and it's not gonna take very long because it's a very, very simple setup. Um, so the main points of what you can see here are my F2R roadbook holder and uh, my uh, phone, which is mounted uh, above it like that. Now, the way that I've opted to mount these is using the, um, the uh, using RAM devices. So the way the RAM system works is you've got a RAM ball attached to your bike, then a RAM arm, and then another RAM ball on the other end of that arm attached to whatever you want to attach to the bike. That's a long-winded way of saying it. Um, lots of different ways of putting RAM balls on your handlebars. The way that I prefer to do it are these um, particular ones that replace 
the, they're, they're hollow and they replace the, um, the bolts that go into the, your top of your handlebar clamps, which keep it really, really neat um, and tidy. So what that means is you've got the ram ball attached to the bike and then you have a, a ram arm like this. See it there? Ram arm. And then um, another ram mount put on the back of my holder. And that means that I can attach like that. And then that attaches to the bike. And it can rotate really easily. And then just with a twist of that, it clamps up really tight and they just don't budge. They're absolutely bomb proof. And as you can see, I've got one on the uh, roadbook holder and then I've got one on my phone. Um, I guess the thing to point out on my phone is that my phone is using a quad lock case and this is a quad lock uh, mount. It's actually the anti-vibration mount because some of the single cylinder bikes uh, transmit a lot of vibrations into the phone and that is comes uh, with its own RAM ball. So that's really super easy to just clamp onto, the, onto there like that and then that clamps onto the handlebars. So it's the same system that the double take mirrors use to attach to your handlebars. Um, very easy to move the mirrors in and out. Now, I could easily have run with my mirror in place, but I chose to take it out. And the reason for that is, is because of, I wanted to be able to move my hand from my, um, my left hand from my uh, handlebars over to rotate my um, roadbook holder very, very easily. And one of the reasons why I put the roadbook holder where I did, um, even though it wasn't in line of sight, putting it up um, higher up my fairing would have been easier to see, especially when I'm standing up, is because it, the manual nature of it is that you have to manually move it with your left hand, the closer that these um, dials are to your left hand, the easier it is. So if I'm going from there to there, that's pretty straightforward. Whereas if it's up there, even though I can see it easier, I've got further to go with my hand. And that is one of the reasons why I mounted it where I did. A couple of other little tips there. So I have got a Montana, a Montana 700 unit, um, and that is mounted up on a GPS uh, cradle up front. Now, I did use the GPS because I was working with event organizers and had access to it wasn't actually competing, um, but it, for this event, you don't need, there is no GPS route available for competitors, so you don't actually need GPS. So I could have run, I didn't need that on the bike, and if I chose not to have that on the bike, I've got this little adapter that my friend uh, Will Linson made, which I can clip into that um, Garmin mount, and then it allows me to actually mount my phone there instead, um, uh, which I could, do to keep things neat and tidy. I didn't on this one, but but you can. And then the only other thing to point out there is um, this is the uh, the wiring that um, uh, Rally Moto supply, and this is to power the GPS transmitter. So if you are prepping, uh, basically I didn't realise that this was required. So it took me kind of 20 minutes on after signing on to take all the gear off my bike, take the um, seat off and wire this into my bike. So if I'd known about this, I probably would have put one of these into my wiring looms or directly to the, um, to, the, to the battery before turning up. And it would have been a much quicker and simpler event to just plug the GPS transmitter in. I kept my GPS transmitter in the top of my tank bag. Just, uh, it needs to have like line of sight so you can't keep it underneath your, your, um, underneath your seat. It's gotta be able to see the sky. Uh, so that's where I kept mine. And that's really it, it's a super simple setup. So I'm just gonna kind of talk you through a little bit of, uh, of how the setup works in practice. So this is me um, riding along. This is shot from my chest using a Dango gripper mount and a GoPro. Um, and you can see everything's kind of working there. Um, you can see that on the left, I've taken the, um, the, the mirror off, so I don't have very far to, to reach over and the point is there really is you're, you're reading the navigation and the symbols there are telling you, mo a lot of the symbols are actually just going straight on, straight on. But as you go, uh, say if there's a junction on your left, a road that you're going past, you'll see that there. 
and that gives you a great indication of kind of how you're doing making sure you're on track so you look down and it says 15.84 you go past a, a road to your left you look at your trip meter if your treat meter says 15.84 or thereabouts you know you're doing uh, you're, you're going right um, not right straight ahead you're, you're correct <laughs> that's what I meant to say and then as you're riding and once you've gone past that little box and you don't need it anymore you manually scroll it on and so it's a continual thing of checking where you are via the trip meter and the paper instructions um, and remembering to roll it on so you can get unstuck there if you kind of go too far and you realize that you've gone beyond your instructions and you need to do a little bit of catching up there but if you make a mistake you can just stop it's not about speed and um, correct everything that's in front of you. So here you can see I've come to a junction, I've stopped the bike, I've got the um, paper scroll in the correct place on the road book, and the thing that I'm doing there with the trip meter is, say the road book is reading 18.25, and my trip meter is reading 18.30. So there's a slight discrepancy there, but I know I'm in the right place. Um, I can just use the volume control on the phone to nudge the button, basically you push the buttons and it goes back and you can go up and down that way to recalibrate where you are. So when you're at a point on the road book that you know exactly that you're in the right place, you can recalibrate your trip meter and away you go. So the majority of the course is on wide gravel track as you've seen and then there are a certain number of special stages which go through the forest and they're a bit tighter, a bit twistier, a little bit muddier. This is quite a nice shot because it's dark and you can actually see the trip meter quite clearly and you can see how those kilometers um, and tenths of kilometers are kind of notching up as you go and how they're corresponding with where you are in the road book. There is other information on there such as your cap headings which is like your compass headings. Now for the nature of this event um, you don't really need to rely on those. If you take this further and you get into semi-professional professional rallying actually cap headings are an important part of the navigation and you get at a different amount of information on your road book as you do on, on this event. But for this one, really the only thing you need to be looking at are the um, trip meter. Uh, you don't really need to worry too much about the cap headings. One of the really important safety aspects of this event is the ability to control your speed through public areas. So as you can see, we're going into a 30 mile an hour zone and on the um, uh, road book that's there, it tells you to slow down. And actually, because the rally uh, organizers can track your speed using the GPS transmitter, you get penalized if you break those speed limits. And that is actually something that is used in the Dakar rally, for example. A lot of those courses will actually go through residential areas, little villages, all the rest of it, where you have to keep your speed down. Um, and if you watch Lyndon's footage of his Dakar rally, you can see, and there are actual kind of audio beeps that tell the rider to slow down um, and then once they're through that phase they can speed up again and it's kind of the same here really you've got to obey the, the, the speed limit um, we don't have access it's not a private event so when we go into a village and it's 30 mile an hour you slow down and I just wanted to include this last little bit just to flag up that um, it is fun, uh, it is a, a relatively uh, easy way to try out rally, but also you do have to have your wits about you a little bit. Should I keep pushing the That was all you, Chris. Like, that was all you. <laughs> so that guy was fine. Uh, he, you know, we got him going on, on his way again. And I think there were a few other people that kind of ended up in ditches, but there were no serious incidents. And no one on this event wants anyone to kind of end up in hospital or kind of get a, their bike trashed. Um, really, the point is that if you've not ridden on gravel before, just take it easy. Big bike, maybe your bike's got ABS on. It's not necessarily going to work the same way on gravel as you might expect it to do on tarmac. Um, also, you're looking down to read your road book, so take it easy. I hope this has been of use to you. Um, maybe it's planted a little seed in your head that this is something you might want to have a go at. Um, 
check out uh, the Rally Motor website. That's a great place to start and there are events all over the country. Some of them are events like this where um, everyone comes together, which was fantastic um, kind of now that COVID is allowing. But there are other events where you can actually go out and do your own um, with your own kit and um, the organizer sends you uh, a roadbook to load into your own roadbook holder. If you enjoyed this film, um, we've got plenty more on the Adventure Spec YouTube channel. Go have a look, subscribe. I want to also let you know about our newsletter. We have an email newsletter that goes out every week and it's a great place to get uh, hints and tips about lightweight adventure motorcycling and importantly special offers that only go out to newsletter subscribers. So follow links and, uh, and find us there and maybe I'll be seeing you in your email inbox soon. Thank you for your time. I know it's precious. I hope you enjoy your first roadbook rally if that's where you end up next.